Hello folks and welcome. Linux Mint 21.1 Cinnamon. I'm going to talk about sound today. Something that pertains to sound. And I'm not talking about your sound drivers. I'm talking about you having to configure some options for you. Whether you're trying to turn off system sounds, whether you are wanting to deconfigure your music player that interacts with that icon on your panel bar, because you can, and uh, that kind of stuff and uh, stuff that uh, may have to do with amplification and or possibly a microphone, as in my case. I'll show you uh, lots of different options today. So I will say welcome, folks. None of my videos are going to be under two minutes on my new YouTube channel, but they all have chapters and timelines, and I do encourage that you read my About section. Linux is for any age, and also my Community tab has some information for you regarding keyword searches because my current database of videos is now over a hundred. So welcome again folks. I'm going to close this down. Linux Mint 21.1 Cinnamon. So where do I begin? I can uh, begin with this icon and okay, I can begin with system settings because there are some different settings in here in both of these. So I'll start with this one. Under System Settings, you can also go to your Mint menu and click that too. It doesn't matter how you get here. It's down at the bottom where it says Hardware under Sound. So I'll walk through this. Some of you folks may not have all of these options, but I do. My uh, flat screen monitor has an HDMI cable and that's where my speakers are on the monitor itself. So that's how my sound is being rerouted for output and my volume is here. I have some other options. My input is my microphone. You can see it flashing with my voice. It's currently set at 89%. Your system sounds are located here. You may have heard this one or that one. These are normally defaulted on along with lots of others. So I turn mine off and you can see lots of options in here. You may have heard this one or that one. That's like when you unplug and plug in a USB stick that kind of thing okay I have nothing in applications but I have a warning for you on this one now many 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 years ago I had a side job of fixing speakers and uh, I don't know how many times I've seen people blow up their speakers because they cranked the volume too high they over amplified their speakers in other words now I don't know about you but a lot of the speakers nowadays are built into monitors and they're hard to replace not to mention it's almost impossible to get parts for these things. So just be careful with the over amplification. You can crank it up to that high and I do not recommend that at all. My recommendation is leave it at 100%. If you want to be adventuresome, I would probably never go above 120. Somewhere in that range. I just want to be aware of the setting right here and what the possibility is. The possibility is a damage that could happen down the road. Maybe. It's not always guaranteed, but you know what? Why push it? So just like I said, 100% should be efficient for any kind of speakers, whether you've got them plugged in the back of the back of the computer or part of your laptop or part of the monitor on your console computer, for instance. All right, now I'm done talking about this box. Let's talk about this one here. I'll also talk about moving this icon too. All right, because I'm not sure where yours is sitting because I move my icons around. And I'll show you that in a little bit here. So we have the standard uh, volume thing. And if I'm pointing at it with my computer mouse and I have one of those um, USB based computer mouse with a scroll wheel on it, I can actually change the volume by pointing at it. You can see it moving. All right, so I have the sound settings, which is the same box I just showed you a couple of minutes ago. And uh, we have launch player. And then I'm going to show you about right clicking on this icon. I got lots of choices that you may not have discovered yet. These are fairly self explanatory the mute output and input. And also, you can see why my microphone is sitting at 89%. But when you hit the configure key, there are some additional options. This is default, by the way. So, what happens with default? Let's open up a music player. I only have one on my system. You can install others. But I'm going to pick a song and uh, I'll pick an album and we can hear the song playing. I'm going to close the player 
and you can still hear it playing. Now this icon is different. If I click it, it shows me the album art in some cases. I'm going to hit pause. But I have lots of player controls in here is what I'm getting at. Player is closed, but I can still continue playing. Now I'm going to hit this X in the corner and it returns the icon back to normal. All right, I'm going to right click on the icon and hit configure and turn this off and let you see what that does. Same player. I will uh, pick the same song. Close that and the post-it note. Icon did not change. However, I can point at it and run my volume back and forth. Or I can do it this way. You need to have the, the pointer roughly in that space. If you go a little bit above it, it won't change. Okay. I may have shown that when I, I show you the uh, one of the automatic wallpaper changers before, but maybe you haven't seen my video on variety. But anyways, that's what I'm doing with sound. What if I wanted that back? Right click while it's still playing. Just turn it back on. Now the icon changed. And I'm back to that. I'm going to hit that and I'm going to close this down. I'm going to right click, configure, and point out some options for you. So show loop and shuffle controls. That's on the player itself. You may want to turn that on. You may want to investigate some of this other stuff in here. There's lots of little things that are in here pertaining to sound. Lots of options in other words. Now I'm going to show how to move this icon. You, let's say you don't like it in this location. Within reason, of course. That has to be within this space. You can right-click in the middle of the panel bar and click Edit Mode. And I highly encourage that you watch my video on editing the panel. I have those videos sitting somewhere on my YouTube site in those 100 plus videos. More importantly, when you turn that on, you may not be able to see this readily, but there's a green box here, and this part of the panel bar is semi-red. And this, believe it or not, is kind of a purplish color. I don't know, that's the best term I can term with it. Now, when you're in this mode here, you can actually start moving these. And be careful when you move stuff. Some things pick up as a set, like these. Okay. However, what I'm going to do is pick up the actual volume icon and move it over to here, in between these guys. Now, sometimes when you do this, you'll have icons that you normally don't see also on, but they are turned on in your applets. Turn this back off, and some of those disappeared because they're currently not in use. But more importantly, the volume icon used to be over here. It still operates the same way. Whether you click on it or right click on it, it still operates the same way. So just don't forget that there are some configuration options for you. So if you don't want to see the player, you just want to have the player all by itself and not affecting this icon, you just turn that off and now you can open up your player. You should be able to play music from any album without basically having this change at all. This will still operate the same way. Okay, I can even close this and it'll continue playing. That would probably not be the best option that I have, but I can also turn that back on. Now I can walk over to that same icon and do that. And close. Because that's normally default. But just for you folks that don't want to have that done, you have an option of turning it off. So with that, I think I've covered pretty much um, what I needed to cover for today, and I'll say thank you for watching.